So what's going on, man? How's everything? How's life? Um, <laughs> Interesting, <laughs> I can assume. <laughs> Interesting, pretty good. You know, um, you know, trying to stay focused and trying to get things done. How do you um, feel about it, everything that's going on, man? It's it's a whole lot of emotions, you know. Um, it's it's when you start it's the whole conversation, it's a whole different thing, you know. Um, people, there's always a different, you know, perspective. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's become very political, uh, which makes it even worse. So the fact that it's become political makes it um, not good for, for to have a conversation. You know. Yeah, it, it's it's very it's a very interesting time. I keep using that word over and over and over again because. It's it's very interesting, man. I, I mean, you're a young guy, and I'm I'm I guess considered young. And I was having a conversation uh, the other day about the Rodney King beatings, and it was in '92, and and I was too young for it to have any effect on me, right? So, but now that I'm older, I can see everything. It affects everything, man. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an insane time, man. I mean, coronavirus. Then we had those murder hornets, <laughs> and then riots. 2020 has been a whole different ball game, um, but like this whole situation is, is, is crazy. Coming from coronavirus and all the way getting into uh, people protesting, uh, and it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane, man. So so how's uh, marketing and advertising life going for you? I saw you, you had some pretty good numbers on, on, on Google. Yeah. Um, so I decided to try, um, you know, both both aspects you know i know you're very very keen on like the facebook apps and i personally use it it's worked for me as i said the last time um and so i wanted to try more of the google apps in the past i've used google apps um it's been pretty pretty good you know but but i started to go into it you know a lot more and since since i did that um it's amazing the kind of numbers i'm seeing that's um, awesome man just, just, and, and and the sales the sales are good because I realize that with Google Ads people go specifically looking for the item that you're selling. So when they type something in Google, it's because they are ready to buy. Yeah, it's more so, intent based, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's been very helpful. Yeah, I've dabbled in, in Google ads, but uh I've I've only done uh, YouTube and uh I did a few Google ads for, for South Texas Comic Con, but uh I did the smart ads, which are, are they pretty much they do them for you. So they know how to optimize it the best. So that was pretty easy. But I mean I, the bulk of it from South Texas Comic Con was like Facebook and Instagram, but I really love YouTube advertising, man. It can get you in front yeah. of a lot of people. I never got into YouTube advertising. It's 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 awesome, man. <laughs> wow, it's, uh, it's I, I, I need to get into that very soon. So, what's going on? What what are you up to, man? What are you up to uh, nowadays? What are you advertising? Um, so I started, you know, different different stuff. Uh, I'm working. I'm building a website for some small businesses here in the valley. Um, so I've been working, you know, continuously for that. Um, we're building. I'm building one app by myself on the side and I'm helping my uh, cousins build another app, another app. Um, and so like all these little different stuff, you know, just getting together and, you know, we have, I have to get this done. We have to get these little things done. Um, it's been, it's been a little stressful, but we're getting together, getting things together. And um, one focus I also wanted to give was to the other page that I have, OMG RGV. Mm -hmm. Um because I feel so, I have I feel like the valley has so much potential, and personally, um, getting into it, I wanted to show the world what the valley has. Because uh, it's about time we appreciate, you know, the people doing amazing things in the valley. It's about time we show the world what the valley is made of. The valley is not like every other place. Yeah. So one thing I've always wanted to stress out, like when everyone else, I understand when people were like, oh, you know, this whole police brutality is not happening in the valley. Why are you protesting? And those are some of the issues. Like, we understand that it's not, you know, blunt out happening here in the valley, but because it's because of the valley's demographics. It's because the valley is a whole different ball game. And I personally am very, very um, excited to be living here. Um, but obviously, every place has its problems. So, you know what's what's interesting is I was listening to I don't know if you saw it, but the Dave Chappelle eight forty eight forty six. Yes. 
So I saw that and and it, it made me change my stance because I was kind of like, well, should I even talk about this or should I not? But I think it yeah. I think it's very important that that people stand up and say something. Like after I, I, I saw that today, I was like, all right, my mentality was wrong. I, I should have been talking about this and I should have used the platform. Like, I mean, because I, I, somebody messaged me and they were like, why aren't you using your platform to talk about this? And I was like, well, it's not a comfortable subject to talk about. So I don't know. I don't know how I fit in all of this, but I mean, Dave Chappelle put it pretty straightforward. It's like, you should stand up and talk I, about this. I also saw it today, like right before talking to you. Yeah. Actually, and I was like, this is exactly how I feel. This is exactly how, or uh, this is exactly what I've been wanting to talk about because we've made, we've made it in such a way that, you know, it's an abomination to talk about race relations. But that's some of the things that we have to be talking about. Those are the conversations that we need to be engaging in because if we don't engage in those conversations, we're not able to make as much impact as we want to make. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right, man. And I saw that I saw that pic of you, dude. It was pretty damn powerful, man. Which one? It was the one of the back with your back. Oh yes, yes. I my best friend made that shirt for me. Um, it, it was. So it's just really what we all want to, want to say. It's something we all want to say because it's not like we want, when, when, when they say Black Lives Matter, it's not like people want to say Black lives are more important than white lives or any other lives. No, right. I don't think it's, that's not what it, the, the intention is. The intention is to say that out of all the lives that matter, we know that all lives matter. Yeah. Uh, out of all lives that matter, Black lives are having you know issues. They're, we're having so many uh, disadvantages and we want to highlight that one life that is not getting the much attention it's not getting the, the the best of treatment so all i wanted to put out there is like we don't want you know better treatment or like um, like extraordinary treatment we all want the same treatment yeah that's, no, that's, i completely agree man but back to your, to your omg dude i think that's that was a really good idea that i i saw you you posted about it on instagram and i was like well, this is this is great for the valley because what i see now is there's a lot of more people that are trying to become influencers especially here yeah. in the valley and that's like the perfect platform to like like push them out yeah so um, go for it go ahead no, so so one of the things that I, I recently did is I reached out to a buddy of mine. I don't know if you know him, Sebi Haddad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I asked him earlier today, um, how much does the the city of McAllen spend on advertising and marketing to push out for like tourism and all that stuff? And he said it's yeah. public information, so I can go ask for it. But what I what I had proposed to him was like I wanna be able to do a proposal to the city and say, Hey, because I mean, if you look at the city of McAllen versus the city of Edinburgh, like Edinburgh's on it, man, they, they, these guys, like they're on it all the time, dude. And the city of McAllen is like behind. They're not doing anything, man. And I think uh, obviously we have one of the bigger, the bigger cities here in McAllen, right. And they want yeah. tourism here. And I think, uh, I don't think they're doing that great of a job pushing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's one thing like with the city of Edinburgh, what I've seen them do is like utilize social media um, to reach out as much as possible. Even though city of McAllen has relied on external pages to grow their brand. So I've seen a page called, um, we'll see you in McAllen. I've seen a page called explore McAllen. Um, I think those are like ways we are trying to, uh, show the, the world what my calendar is made of. But I've always I've also seen City of Annenberg use more of their page. So the main page, City of Annenberg, pushing out information to the people. So then it becomes more credible. Yeah. Um you know people will not will not take information from Explore McAllen and say this is from the city of McAllen because there's no um, that kind of like authority behind it. But when people see the city of Edinburgh putting out putting out ads pushing out, you know, um, stuff about things going on in the city, it's more credible. People know that it's from their trusted source. Yeah, you're absolutely so, yeah. you're absolutely right, dude, because I was like, I was looking at all the stuff that, that they've been posting and they did like a little campaign during the coronavirus and it didn't reach that many people. I was like, well, they're not, they're not pushing out any advertising. So yeah. whatever they're getting is all organic. Mm-hmm. 
And yeah. you and I both know that <laughs> business pages don't get crap, man. <laughs> along with only just 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 a little way. Like I, mean, I, I think probably because they don't understand the power of, of advertising. They don't understand the power of things they can receive from, you know, just like Facebook ads, Google ads, all these little things. Um, we're having we're seeing my talent get, you know, some a little bit of press, especially from what happened in downtown. But that's not good press, you know, right. that's not showing people what so so instead of like we get in this organic traction by someone's misbehavior, why not push out the actual narrative, control the narrative of let's say this is what my talent is made of, this is what we want to see. So I think those are some of the things they need to start focusing on, pushing out you know, apps to show the world what McCallum is made of. You're right, dude, because what I was pitching was like, well, you have to have a content marketing strategy, which is highlighting local businesses, business owners, because McCallum's huge, huge into business, man. They, they're trying to bring out, they're actually trying to bring in a ton of outside business here. And I was like, well, why don't you highlight the people that are already doing business here? And that's one of the gripes that I have with like the city of McCallum is that, they don't, I don't feel like they give enough love to their content creators that are always mentioning their name. So if you notice, like on my podcast now, like I don't even mention the city of McAllen. I'll say I'm from Texas. Yeah. And I, I want to be able to give my city the credit. Like I'm here, I'm developing content in here. I mean, I, I just don't understand why. Maybe it's, it's just too far past them. Maybe they just don't understand social media or the power of it. What do you think? actually wanted to know like who handles their social media and who who takes care of you know because i feel like when you have it's a whole different generation like our generation wants to see something different um the generation before me wants to see something different the generation after me wants to see something different so you know breaking down all this audience and targeting people the right way um it goes very long way because you, you need to understand your audience. Obviously, I know <laughs> you know very well how much an audience is important. Yeah. And I think that um, in doing that, they need to obviously work with the right people. So whoever is maybe handling their social media, um, their PR and stuff like that, needs to really understand the, the, the audience that they're reaching out to. So I had my, my content writer because I can't write for shit, dude. Like my writing is horrible, man. <laughs> Sometimes I'll make grammar mistakes in there and I'll catch it later. It's like, oh, dude, I'm such a dumbass. But that's why I have a content writer because she makes me sound smart and she she articulates my actual ideas and puts it in writing. But I was like, yeah. I had her write a an article that I'm going to look back at it and I still need to fine tune a few things to make it local. But she wrote an article about how you should be using social media with videography, photography, and then podcasting, yeah. and then also pushing out the content writing part of it. Because at the end of the day, I think that each city or each region has to be their own news channel. Like they have yeah. to have everything on there on their channel, not these other places like Explore McAllen. It's just that city page. Yeah. And yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, I don't know. Podcast. You, 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 you know, podcast work, yeah. you know, having a YouTube channel, um, you know, involving a community. I think that's the huge, thing, especially for like, for me, when I'm doing the OMG RGB, the main thing for me is like involving a community in everything that we do. So like, um, you know, going out there doing, doing interviews, um, getting to know the story of people who are actually making it and who are, who are, you know, taking both steps to try to do stuff. Um, I think sharing the stories of those people is very, very important because they make the city great. Yeah, you're right, dude, because I mean, at the end of the day, we're all looking at news channels or I don't even know if you watch news. I don't watch news, but a <laughs> bunch of people are just it's fake news, it's fake articles. And the great thing about podcasting is you get to know the person over time and you trust them like you you'll know if they're lying to you. So podcasting is very raw and it's very real. And you know, like, okay, this person is a trusted source. And that's one of the problems I've always had is like, where do you get credible information from? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking about it. Like I actually wanted to post it on my Facebook the other time. I was thinking like all my, you know, journalist friends or entrepreneur friends need to start thinking about a more centralized and a more 
not polarizing media because right now all we see all we see is a very very partisan media yep. which is not helpful to to grasp information so people cannot go to a particular source and say i want credible information unbiased information we're not getting that so, yeah nobody so, knows where to go to exactly no one knows where to go for like a centralized news source so it's it's very very it's hurting the communities it's hurting the, the nation and i think that it's time to like build a platform where we we'll have a centralized news where we don't have to rely on a partisan media because obviously they are getting funded from whatever partisan uh, ideas people have or whatever party, parties that are in power or whatever, um, they're getting funded and that's how they have to survive. Yeah. So we need a more like nonpartisan media, which will give us the facts straight, you know, just point blank. Yeah. And I, I think that's uh, something that people have a lot of problem with is they don't, they don't want to hear the truth. I think like the other day I was on TikTok and I was just scrolling yeah. and I was seeing riots, like just riot after riot after riot. And I was like, my daughter is seeing this dude. So I took yeah. the phone away from her, man. I was like, this is what we're seeing on on, on TikTok, dude. Like, imagine everything else. Facebook, Instagram, I, YouTube. What do you think about, about the whole YouTube controversy that they're silencing the, the creators? Um, I think, I personally think, like, when it comes to freedom of speech, no particular media or no particular company should be, you know, censoring people. However, like there's a saying, um, there's a saying from one of the our past presidents of Ghana who says that he can guarantee freedom of speech, but he can't guarantee freedom after speech. So you can say all you want, you can say all you want on you know online, you can use all the cast words, you can do whatever, but you always need to keep in the back of your mind that there's repercussions. Right. Your reputation can be damaged, your brand can be damaged, and that's like a lot of things we're saying now, but like. When you go on social media and stuff like that, people are pointing out people who are saying racist things. People are pointing out people who are saying sexist things. And those, you've, you've already said it. That's your freedom. You've already expressed yourself. But after that comes all the repercussions. After that comes all the, um, you know, getting fired from your job and stuff like that. So I think, um, obviously, I don't think YouTube should be censoring, censoring anyone. You know, um, they... The liability lies on us as a people to siphon and know what kind of news we're getting, to know which news is, is right and which news is wrong. So, I mean, anyone can go onto YouTube, say whatever they want to say, but, you know, after they say it, it's up to us to, to um, find out what is more credible, to believe what we choose to believe. Uh, and so, like, for me, when it came to, like, you know, Twitter censoring or putting fact checkers on, on let's say, like, Trump's um, Twitter, Twitter tweet. Um, I thought that I mean it was a good step in a way because it was a fact checker and not like a censorship. But it, either way, one thing that I made known is that if you're going to do it for one person, which is Trump, you need yeah. to do it for everyone. So I don't want to see you know someone else being there saying whatever they want to say with no fact check. If you're doing it for one person, you do it for everyone. That's how. We have a fair society. Yeah, what's interesting about that is a buddy of mine uh, actually screenshotted his Facebook post and is like, "Hey, look, they fact checked my my actual post." And also, what was really? interesting is is Snapchat they denied like they they decided not to put Trump's uh, advertising on there, dude. That's that, well, there's there's always a two way street. Like I think that they have you know, the right to do whatever they want. It's their platform. Yeah. Um, the other side of me wants to think that why are you being biased? Is it like, well, in what way are you trying to be biased towards like whatever he wants to put out there? I mean, if he's putting some content that is very, very toxic and, and not good for the community, then that's quite understandable. But if it's genuinely because you don't like their rhetoric or you don't like, you know, he can say all he wants to say. It's up to the public to choose to accept it or, or not accept it. So when it comes to stuff like that, Snapchat has the right to say, I'm gonna, I'm not going to accept your, your money. Or I'm not going to accept your information put it on my platform. But also they need to like check themselves and make sure that they are not being biased 
for political reasons. Yeah, I think I think just these these huge, massive social media companies just have a ton of leverage, a ton of power over everything. Yeah. They have everybody's information. Is like, well, you're giving it to them for free, but in exchange, like you have to follow their terms of service. And I don't think people really understand that because people still are like, well, why is Facebook doing this? Why is Snapchat doing this? Why is Twitter doing this? Well, it's a private oh. company. That's why. Yeah, literally, they have class. So they choose to pay. I mean, people don't read the terms and conditions. Yeah, never. <laughs> people don't read that. So um, well, as soon as you accept those, you're you're you have your own liability, and and it's it's all up, you're, up to you. You can't sue them for saying we don't want your we don't want you on our platform. That's one of the things also. Yeah, and it's it's interesting for like for advertisers like we want to use a platform because it's made us a lot of money, right? So I find myself like. Should I even be talking about this? Should I even post it? It's like that. It's that that narrative that I want to talk about it, but I don't want to get banned and then get my accounts banned. And then and then what? The one thing that gave me life, <laughs> I'm bashing about it, <laughs> I'm complaining about it. So it's like ah, it's it's always something, man. Yeah, I mean, we should we should be able to like you know express ourselves whatever in however way we want. But as marketers, also you know we need to make money on the side. <laughs> for using some of these platforms and these platforms accept it or not have given us so much leverage and so much ability to do a lot of things and to put products in front of people that we're not realizing because obviously TV is going to fade out very soon. Um, uh, radio and all of that. I don't see, I don't see as much because even people are starting their own podcast. Why would I want to listen to, you know, something that's always playing with no exact or targeted information so that's why podcasts are on the rise because you know people when people listen to your podcast they are getting information that is like maybe geared towards them or in a specific way but you know with with radio or whatever they are playing music one time they're doing this one time they're doing that another time playing ads and all of that people are getting tired of it yeah, what's interesting about the radio is a buddy of mine, Ari, he he sent me a list of all the radio stations here in the Rio Grande Valley, and some of them are owned by iHeartRadio, and there's probably like like six other different stations that own all the other ones, right? And what yeah. was interesting about that was Q94.5 in, in uh, I believe, one month had 88,000 listeners. 88,000 listeners is nothing, and that means if you're paying for an ad, like I wanted my podcast to be on, on the radio on Q94.5, I have to catch my ad at a certain time with yeah. those 88,000 people that were listening at some given point. I mean, yeah, no. I reach more, more than that every single month, man. I think, and I think people are starting to understand the power of social media. I, I really, really like laugh at people who, you know, undermine social media or don't know the power of it because I see a lot of posts with like millions, like literally millions of views and you would you, you definitely wouldn't get that when you run a TV ad, you know, once or like, you know, even like five days in a month, you not get that kind of like people post a single video and the views just rise because yeah. people are interacting, people want to be on their phones. It's just it's just the way to go, man. It's a, it's a different it's a different life now, man. I, and I I love influencer marketing. I've tried it a few times with some people, but I think I've told you this before that I just I picked the wrong person and it just wasn't a right fit for it. But I'm starting to refine it. But I think the one thing that that I'm willing to do is to invest money and to see if it works because I guess it's like kind of like a college tuition where you're paying it and then you figure it out and then you get the benefit or the, the value off it towards the end after you've already done it. I'm doing the same yeah. thing with the stock market, man. It's, it's been a crappy yeah. two days, dude. Oh, yeah. My, my stocks, uh, it took a dip, but I think Tesla is doing pretty okay. Uh, not too bad, but you know, even zoom took a dip. Did, have you, uh, have you ever heard of battery day? No. What's so, that? So battery day is Tesla. So I got, I got a few Tesla stocks and battery okay. day, they were supposed to have it last month. They pushed it over to this month, but they haven't had it yet. I think it might maybe come out sometime next week, hopefully. 
But Elon Musk is going to announce the new battery that's supposed to last a million miles. And it's supposed to last 16 years. Wait, for the Tesla vehicle? Yes. <laughs> the battery is supposed to last a million miles. <laughs> it's insane. Oh my. So I'm hoping when he announces that, the stock just boom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that because I was this going to say I'm going to tell. But thanks for telling me that. <laughs> yeah, and they're also supposed to come out with a Tesla minivan. Have you, have you heard of that? No. The great thing about the stock market is it forces you to learn as much as humanly possible so you don't lose your money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the times where, you know, Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, on Twitter and he was like, you know, this, he doesn't know why the Tesla stock is too expensive. As soon as I saw that tweet, I was like, it's taking a dip. And it did take a dip. Yeah. It's crazy because some of the little things he can say, and he he's one of the people that I admire very, very well. He's, he's, he's uh, a serial entrepreneur. He's he's the thing. Like, he does it. And, yeah. and I, have so, I have so much respect for him. So As, as crazy know. as he is, dude, he just he gets it done. Yeah, he gets it done. That's it. You know, I I always wanted that boring flamethrower. Jerry Jerry Leal has one, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, Jerry is. I met Jerry. Uh, I think on Tuesday he came down here and I I met him briefly. But uh, he's all into Elon Musk. Yeah. He's so up there. I actually asked him if I can hold his flamethrower so I can put it up on my wall. He's like, Yeah, that sounds good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna I just wanna shoot it, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what he's saying. That's literally what he's saying. <laughs> what have you been up to? Uh, so during the whole coronavirus, I lost half of my clients, and then I gained them all back. But recently, I've been uh, I've been pushing more towards uh, nothing in the valley. So the past couple of clients that I picked up are nowhere in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, and and I wow. think that's kind of where I'm aiming to go in the future because. Ideally, my goal is to be able to extract as much money as I can from the internet, period. That's, that's, that's my sole goal of entrepreneurship is extract as much money as I can from the internet. And, you know, just like you, you know this, every time you work with a client, it's sometimes difficult, especially when oh, you yeah. meet face to face. It's, it's very, um, how do I say, there's a disconnect sometimes. So yeah. this whole new world that we're living in in the internet it allows us to have conversations like this through a computer, through the internet, and be able to still conduct business and be able to make profits off of it. And I think that's a very cool thing because it's never been like that before, man. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, I, and also, I want to know your views on, on, on clients in the RGB because, uh, you know, as a website designer, I, I have quite a few clients here, but all my clients here, you know, a lot of people, let's say I do a, lo a little bit of consulting, talk to them about as soon as they hear the price, they're a little skeptical or they don't want they, they, they don't budge on the they don't want to get in because of the pricing. But whenever I have a client from out of state or you know out of the valley, as soon as you tell them the price, they're very excited to hear it because they've heard higher than that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's a very we live in a very interesting place and uh, were two years ago. I uh, actually, I I went to go work for a buddy of mine, Jesse De Leon, which is, uh, he's one of the most underrated e-commerce people that I know. He hit a million dollars in sales on Wayfair, Amazon, and Etsy. Uh, I think his second year or, or I forget which, which year, but I, I, I just literally just, uh, I did an apprenticeship with him for three months just to learn how he did everything, dude. And I was, I was packing boxes and I was doing everything. But at that time, he was like, entrepreneurs or business owners are going to get the cheapest thing possible, period. That's what he yeah. said. Like, that's that's their main goal is to keep their costs low and be able to get yeah. as much as they can from it, pretty much. So ever since he told me that, I was like, I, I get it. I get both sides yeah. because us as advertisers or creators, we want to we want to provide as much value. And we see it as like, no, this is valued at this much and I hold it dear to me, so I want to price it even higher. But to them, it's not necessary that it's not as valuable to them. So, for example, 
I used to work for one of my clients and uh, my price was, I, I still think I'm one of the, the most inexpensive marketers, advertisers here in the Rio Grande Valley. I, I always tell people that I'm like, I'm, I'm yeah. undervalued, man. So pick me up now before my prices go up. And I yeah, always tell them that. I'll, I'll definitely use you for that. <laughs> and, and the one thing is like these, these advertisers, or I mean, these clients are, are using me, right. And they're getting the video content. They're getting the advertising. So they're, their faces in front of a lot of people all the time. But usually when somebody starts getting stuff in and they start seeing it, they start seeing the numbers, they want more, they want more, they want more. And he went out and he got some billboards and I was like, man, I, you know, my thoughts on billboards, man. (laughs) So for him to pay more for a billboard than he was paying me, it was kind of like a slap in the face. And I was like, I know what social media can do if you stay consistent and yeah. you keep pushing into it because that's the number one thing people won't do is they will not stay consistent. Yep, yep. Consistent, yeah. like always. Even Gary Vee says that it's it's just about hard work and consistency. So you know, someone can have the most creative or the most beautiful designs, but if you're not consistent to like showing the world what you have, you're not eventually going to. <laughs> no one is going to come back because you yeah. you know putting on content out there as as you you can so i definitely understand the consistency part billboards i don't like yeah (laughs) and you're right dude because i mean i don't get paid for the podcast and i know one day i will but opportunities have come from the podcast because of what i talk about how i talk about it the guests that i have it's it's kind of like you're just investing in yourself to be able to get the payoff later and that's one of the things that people will not do and I don't think, I don't think, I, I honestly don't think anybody will, will take the time. I think 99% of people won't invest in themselves to be able to get that payoff later. How, how do you see it with your generation? Um, huh, it's, it's hard because um, looking at our generation, not everyone is wired to think. So when it comes to like, you know, getting work done, um, some people are more reluctant than others, like, and those who are really, really looking to make a change or to, to work, they will work. They would go all in. They would get things done. They are hustlers. But unfortunately, a lot of people also don't want, they don't want to struggle. They, they just think they can just wake up one day and get everything done within a split second. But no, it's, it doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a long process. It's a long struggle. And, and, without consistency, as you said, or without like getting through it, we're, we're not getting there. So that's like one thing that I've always had, like with our generation, it's more about how do we stay consistent and how do we stay patient? Yeah. Do you think that it's, it's harder for, for a black man here in the Rio Grande Valley to be able to, to grow that way? Uh, I don't think like personally from my experience, yeah. um, it's, been because of like for me one thing that I very very hold yet is networking and, and and getting out there getting you know talking to people and stuff like that for me I've been very fortunate to like talk to anyone I don't care who you are yeah. I will talk to, I will try to you know I mean be my friend or you know have that connection so networking for me has been has been very helpful and it's helped me in different aspects um the only way I see it being tough here in the Valley is language barrier. That's the only um, good reason that you can have for not doing your best is the language barrier. Because for me, when I came here a few years ago, that was one thing that even prevented me from getting a job wow. because I, I couldn't speak Spanish. So um, the only thing I can say is language. But apart from that, the Valley is positioned in such a way that you can break through um, if you're hardworking and if you, you're, you're confident in, in getting things done. Yeah. I, th- I think the, the saying is if you're, you're competent and you know what you're doing, you'll be able to do good because people want to do work. They want to work with people that they know, like, and trust, but that are also competent. Yeah. 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 So I, I mean, I try to be as much, uh, talk as people as I can, you know, I talk to people, I make a little, I make silly jokes sometimes. Um, 
you know, as an extrovert, it's, it's, it's been very helpful. But for someone who's an introvert, they might find it very hard, you know, breaking through, especially if obviously they have that language barrier in the first place. Um, they could find it, you know, pretty tough. But um, for me personally, it's been it's been amazing. It's been great. That's good to hear, uh, man. Yeah, met people, talked to people. Yeah. yeah it, it's good. And I think th- I, this is what I was talking to, to Lamar Jones about is I feel like sometimes, and I don't know if it's everywhere, but I felt it here, and I know a lot of people talk about about the haters. Like people just, yeah. they just don't want to see you do better than them. Do you, have you yeah. ever experienced that? Hundred <laughs> percent. I, I I definitely get that. Like like for me, when I see people, all I think about is partnerships and not competition. Yeah. So. Um, unfortunately here in the Valley, it's not like that. People don't want to turn up and do things. People don't, people, everyone wants to just do things by themselves. Um, which is obviously one of the things that I've had a problem with when you go out to someone and say, Hey, let's do this. It's a little, you know, not as forthcoming. Um, but it's partnerships is huge. We, we like getting together, we're doing things together and not thinking about, Oh, they're going to be better than me or whatever. Right. I think it's, more community thing and we'll grow together we get forward together so. and you're right dude because i think that's that's one of the things that has turned me off about the rio grande valley is because now i'm starting to look for these outside sources not to deal with any business owners or, or people here in the rio grande valley that way i don't feel like well the valley owes me something like I, i'm just doing what i do but i want to do it at a grander scale and like the other day um one of my clients was like, do you know somebody that can make these really nice flyers and these banners that we can put up on social media? And I went to a direct competitor of mine. I was like, yes, I know somebody that does this really well. I'm not a designer. I do I do advertising. I do marketing and I do videography and photography. The, the design stuff is not my thing. And I understand that. But I'm I'm willing and I'm, I'm I guess I'm confident enough to be able to be like, you know what? I'm not good at this. This person is. Yeah. They're my direct competition, but at the end of the day, I don't care because I know I have a mentality that I'm going to make it regardless. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's the kind of mentality like, people need to have. And, like, most of the people that I partner with in done, you know, maybe a little stuff, there are people who want to, one, learn, people who believe in the fact that um, we get we get through a journey together. So it's, I, I always tell people, like, don't think you're going to get successful with the next day or the next month or the next year. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take a long period of time. But, you know, when you work together, like two heads are better than one. Yeah. You achieve more than you can expect. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, man. All right, yeah. So uh, I got to run in a little bit, but if you, do you have any other questions for me? No. Oh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, potentially start a podcast soon. Yes. Um, just talking about you know life issues and, and, and little things that I do and especially when it comes to websites I want to start being able to show people how to build their own website because I mean I'm, people are paying me to do it but I feel like putting out that content and letting people know is very very valuable and uh, it's information that people need to see or people need to learn so I'm thinking about doing that. You know what's interesting about that is is I came up with a new it's, it's actually this this type of, of of video that I'm pushing out and also I'm doing kind of like a little bit more tutorials about how I do what I do with the advertising and stuff and I'm showing people exactly how to do it and I think one of the things that people think is like I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass for showing people how I do it but honestly you're not <laughs> because I've gotten more requests than ever before from people that just don't want to do it or don't have time. But I think talking about it is the important part because if nobody knows about it, then nobody knows the potential of it. Yep. Yep. I, I totally agree. People think it's like shooting yourself in the foot, as you said, but um, like it's all, it's all content marketing. Gary Vee is out there putting out all the information, free information to everyone. Yep. But he's, he's still getting things done. Yep. So uh, that's, that's like really important. Well, good luck on your podcast, man. I'm, I'll definitely hear it, man. Check it out. So uh, I know podcasting is just going to be something that, that's going to blow up by the next five years at least, man, because it's already huge. 
And once it starts trickling down here to the Rio Grande Valley, the Rio Grande Valley gets everything late. People are latecomers. So I'm glad oh, to yeah. be one of the very first people to talk about podcasting and how to podcast and what you should do. So hopefully I'll become one of the uh, the main people that people will come to. Oh, yeah. Honestly, for one, like you right now, you're I don't know who else does like some little podcast, but when it comes to podcasts, you're obviously the number one um, here in the Valley that I know of. So. Yeah, there, job, keep it up. there's there's a few people that have podcasts, but I, they're not as consistent. I think that's one of the things that goes back to everything is you have to stay consistent. I think somebody shared a statistic with me the other day that the average podcast lasts 14 episodes and then it's done. Like, that's it. It's hard, man. Like the preparation, inviting people, finding guests. It's it's very yeah. it's it's probably one of the hardest things I do for zero money, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm willing to put in the time. So, much respect for that. You, 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 you. Cool, man. Well, y'all, I'll talk to you soon, bro. All right, be safe. All right, talk to you soon, man.